So the first project that we are going to look back on is the building of the chicken tractor. Which also we... known as a mobile chicken coop, <laughs> not a tractor <laughs> that has like a John Deere. Welcome to the Little Pallet Farmhouse. We homestead on 20 acres of woodland in northeast Missouri. A small wood property as we see it is full of untapped potential. Even though it's often sold off as low value land, we disagree. And so we're here to share our dream with you as we tackle DIY projects around the farm and home to fill our pantry from the land. This is our journey towards self-sufficiency on a woodland homestead. Hey guys. So what Carrie and I are gonna try to do in the next 30 days is post a video every day. And it's about projects that her and I have done over the past, I don't know, two, three years um, on our farm and then on the house to where we're let's say maybe the beginning of the uh, of your homestead journey and things you'd want to do just to make life a little bit better for you uh that's the plan so 30 projects in 30 days 30 farm and home projects in 30 days so the first project that we are going to look back on is the building of the chicken tractor which also we also known as a mobile chicken coop <laughs> not a tractor <laughs> that has like a John Deere. A chicken tractor? No, no, no. The chickens can't drive a tractor. No. And there is no tractor that runs on diesel or gas with an engine um, made from a company called Chicken. You're not one for following trends, are you? No. Never. I'll set them, <laughs> <laughs> but I won't follow them. But just not fashion trends. Because somebody somewhere said, ooh, and off they go. And everybody just jumps on it. <laughs> I'm just wondering where that name came from. Like, how, did the, how does the word tractor get stuck to a m mobile chicken coop? I have no idea. Is it because it has wheels? Then it would be called a cart. Chicken cart. Chicken cart. We don't have to call it a chicken tractor. Because a tractor has got horsepower, you know, it does more things than just takes a human being to move it. I think that's not a tractor. Anyway, send your comments. So the chicken tractor, also known as the mobile coop. Carrie comes to me and says, hey, we, we should get something like this and shows a picture. And then there's another picture and a picture and a picture and a picture. And so there's all kinds of ideas out there. You want something light that's going to be movable, uh, but not that's going to hold however many you're going to do. Because we had, we did meat birds. And uh, then the question was, well, they, they, they need to get shut up in, a, in the night too instead of in a cage, but then at night you're like, ah, oh, if, if predators can easily get in here, then yeah, we're done. Because we're in the woods and, you know, raccoons and whatever. So the idea was, and you'll see, where a lot a lot of it was just actually not two by fours, well, a few two by fours, but the two by threes are actually the little, they're, they're, they're smaller. So they're a little bit less expensive. And then uh, I had bought a roll of uh, this five foot, chicken wire fence and so and, and plywood so that was where the coop that was that had a run uh it could hold about 20 birds and it had a coop to shut them up at night so it made it heavier because of the coop it was all plywood but they had a place to eat and then move it every every day every two days hey 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 samson no no, no. The rocket ship's getting ready to launch. Yeah. <laughs> On the downhill. This is the easy part. I feel like as we've used the coop, there are some things that we might have done differently or could have done better because like the doors 
have walked and the wheels came off and <laughs> a few things that like what would you have done differently now you know what you know oh the roosting bars inside were also like a little bit not quite enough room well that, that's the thing is like it was made for uh, birds that maybe not last more than 12 weeks right then... so these birds are not going to lay eggs or necessarily mm -hmm. roost but we now have a heritage breed in there which will you know take longer so and because we're wanting to have a sustainable source of meat birds then... instead of buying a cornish cross hen that's like an eight week bird and boom you're done versus yeah like which eat a like Delaware. a crazy amount of bagged feed yeah. like you know they're going to strip your pasture and need the feed so we're looking for a bird that will live on grass and be more sustainable so we will need to raise them to where they lay eggs and reproduce the next generation. So things that change about it maybe is, uh, so the wheel system isn't, wasn't great. I think I got some wheels that were made for a, a, a gate because uh, their wheels were just expensive. If you just bought wheel, like these hard wheels that, you know, they're gonna, they're not rubber, or don't need, need any plating. And uh, so I was trying to figure out this gate wheel to wood and like that system lasted, I mean, it, it, it did okay, but it, it wasn't uh, a long-term thing. And they were real short wheels. So when I lifted the back end up, when I lifted the front end up to, to wheel it over to the next spot, if the ground was uneven, then I would hit the back end of the, the tractor as, it's, as, it's, as I picked it up and moving it along. Um, so that was, that was it. so we need bigger, taller wheels and the wheel system, I think, for a lot of homesteaders is is a big, is some is somewhat of an issue because you want it light to where you can move it by hand. Maybe if you if you don't have something that like a, a lawnmower or a four wheeler to move it, and so and then I also made it to where in the back end of it uh, you can't really get to where the wheels would be to shore up and strengthen that part, and it's also heavier. All the weights on that end where the where the where the plywood of the actual coop is. One thing that I didn't like about the wheels that we did have on <laughs> came off was that because they didn't have, I don't know what that system is where they sort of like lift up, There's, there was no leverage system, which meant that there was a gap at the back. There was a gap underneath, which, and we did have a fox when we had the ducks in there um, gain access by, you know, it's easy for them to tunnel when there's just a little bit of a gap. So we had to then move it and then put rocks around it. So um definitely. that's when we had a fox that was and that's another thing to think about is like how much when that tractor sits to the ground and it's hard to get hard for a predator to get to which is important for us to have a coop they can go up in there and get and then right. no predator can get in there yeah at night but like during the day how easy is a is a predator going to get to the birds yeah. and so yeah uh, i i think predator pressure is an important thing because I well, do. for us, it was mostly because because our dog, the Pyrenees, he's able to be around in the area. And right. He does help for a bit. So. Yeah. But other areas of homesteads might not have the same level, like where they have the coops that don't, ha they have the chicken tractors that don't have a, a coop in them. They just, the birds are just in right. the cage the whole time. Cage. There are certain areas that might be safer than where we live because we have every kind of critter in the woodland that's going to try access the chickens at night so that's why we had to have a box in the tractor which was worked good overall <clears throat> it's, it's it's been fine the birds eat they live they survive we haven't lost any of these delawares yet or or the other ones that were in there with them and we had the first go was uh red rangers and we bought 23 of them or something like that and within 12 weeks there was seven to eight pound birds easily and so moving 23 birds that weighed eight pounds a piece you get you do the math there's a there's a lot of weight in in the back of that thing because you want to move the tractor when they're not in the run usually it's easier when they're in the coop and so to pick it up and, and move it over there's a lot of weight there so i do really like that do you call it a d-ring or the the hook the eye <laughs> bolt, an eye, an eye bolt something. um that you put in so we can clip up the water With because the carabiner the carabiner is on, on some rope and just clip them right because when you're moving the tractor around so much you're gonna hit 
uneven ground. And when you're trying to put a water on the ground, if it's slightly off center, then the water's just gonna run out. And um, so I really like having a water that's suspended so <laughs> that it's just easy stays to manage, level. stays level. And then um, we've tried different feeders, haven't we? Because the one thing about half of the coop is exposed to the rain, and then there is the other part of the coop that they can go under. So we can shove the food under there, but then of course it's difficult to access if they kick it further along. Um, but also keeping the food so it doesn't get wet. So you take a five gallon bucket and they have uh, feeders for chickens that you make a hole in the bucket and you screw this, uh, it's an access entry to where the chicken will stick their head in the bucket and get grain and then the grain stays dry. Because that's another thing to think about is waste feed waste and then because feed's not cheap nothing's cheap mm -hmm. uh, so to keep it dry and they're not tipping over a, a open dish and then it spills out and then once it's wet and soggy they don't really see to it anymore they like it uh, dry and crunchy or whatever so anyway um, so right now it seems to be a pretty good system and then obviously moving the coop to new grass you know uh, and ours is a they have a run of 12 feet by five feet. So it's, it's at 60 square feet of grazing they can do in two days time. They have a, a bare rectangle basically, and then it's on to the next piece of 60 square feet. So, so I hope, uh, I hope that's been helpful for you about what we've done so far with uh, a, one mobile chicken coop, also known as a chicken tractor. Um, it's been a good fit for us thus far. I think, However, that's coop number three, four <laughs> of what we have to sort of manage and, you know, go between different ones, which, 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 between the birds, ducks or chickens. I think ultimately we'd like to have a bigger place permanently. We've, we've transitioned in where we are living as well. So not, that not a bigger place, not big, acreage. Bigger just, coop. Yeah. Well, I think when you're just getting started with your homestead, it's, there's a lot of investment of money and time to build infrastructure. And so yes. we wanted to start with something that was small and manageable without having to commit to sort of like the big barn. And well, too, you want to see what you're going to, how's it going to do? Do you want to do homestead? homestead? <laughs> like two years, three years, five years in, you're like, hmm. <laughs> it's a hard way. Hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot of commitment here. There's no going out on a Saturday night. Sometimes, so. But I think also you want to be able to, as you live on your piece of land, you're going to decide where you want things and you might not know that immediately. So, you know, because of the proximity of the coop for flies or noise or smell or safety, those kind of things. So, you know, I don't know that I would have built the chicken coop where it is now had we lived here three years already. So... Um, ultimately, point. we've got this really cool idea. Well, I have got this really cool idea. Another picture of a chicken, Another a log, photo. a log cabin, chicken chalet. <laughs> chalet. So they'll go skiing after they and have and and then they'll come into their chalet with their hot chocolate <laughs> for chickens. Can, can you build it? <laughs> can you build it? Well, that's the big picture. That's a, a project we've got down the line. But up next, Caleb's installing the hydrant for our garden. So we don't have to drag the hose everywhere. But we still have to drag the hose everywhere. Not as far. It's a little more convenient. <laughs> okay. So that's up next. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you'll stick around and check out our other videos on growing food, raising livestock, and harvesting supplies from our woodland homestead. Aside from being a source of never-ending projects and products, we hope that our quest to shape our place in the world by working with nature and not against it will rekindle a warm satisfaction that comes with relearning old skills and bring back the joy and wonderment of being part of a place where balance brings abundance.